This is huge for the Chicago Bulls. We're going to be talking about some major points that the Chicago Bulls are going to need to hit on as they get ready to take on the Cleveland Cavaliers tonight. We're also going to be talking about some keys to the preseason for the Chicago Bulls as they continue to build out this roster. This is your host, Rico Greenhow, and you have found yourself on another episode of Bulls Digest. And so today we are getting ready for the Cleveland Cavaliers. It is the first of five games in this upcoming NBA preseason. And even though it is NBA preseason, it still means a lot to the Chicago Bulls because they're still trying to figure out what type of direction they want to go in with this team. What is their identity? And so that brings me to a couple of key points as we move into this uh, first game with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And so let's go ahead and bring up point number one. And it is with the veterans on this team like Zach Levine, uh, Patrick Williams, Lonzo Ball, Vooch. Like, we want to make sure that these players are ready to go in NBA preseason action. It is one thing to be playing five on five, it's another thing to go out there and play these training camp scrimmages. But it is going to be another thing now to go into these preseason games where you're going against some players, uh, not necessarily the starters, but players out there who are trying to fight uh, for their NBA career. So they are certainly going to be playing hard. And so we need to make sure that these players can stay healthy. All right. I think that that is number one. And if you have been looking at the preseason thus far, you got a chance to see what has happened to the Memphis Grizzlies. In fact, in training camp, Jaron Jackson Jr. went down to a hamstring injury just last night. John Morant went up for a dunk, limped off the court. And so this is something that we do not want to see from these players that have had injuries in the past, like Zach Levine, Patrick Williams, Lonzo Ball. We certainly wouldn't want to see that happen to Vooch because these players are going to be depended on as we continue to try to build out and see what our playing style is and uh, how we're going to bring these younger players along. And so, you know, I would hope for the first game that we do see these players be able to go out there, obviously play their game, but uh, come away from this thing healthy because I think that that is point number one. And point number two for these um, older players or players that have been on the roster, like Zach Levine, uh, you know, is the fit. You know, are they going to be able to fit well with Josh Giddy, who is a pass first point guard that the Chicago Bulls obviously have invested in. And I think that the offense has changed because of that. And so I think that, uh, you know, we have the question about Zach Levine. He said all the right things in the training camp. So I'm curious to see here in game one, uh, does that continue? Is he going to have the chemistry that he has talked about with Josh Giddy? Vooch has mentioned that he is excited to play with Josh Giddy. He feels like he can be very effective effective. And then Patrick Williams, I, I would have to think he's excited because there is no DeMar DeRozan here. He's going to be playing a faster tempo. He's going to have chances to definitely get a lot more shots up. And offensively, I think that the Bulls are going to be depending on him. So I would have to think that uh, this is going to be critical for him in game one. And then, you know, with Kobe White having to play off the ball, you know, I think that Kobe White's going to be just fine down the line. I don't think that this is going to be a huge adjustment for him or Ayo Desumu, even if he comes off the bench. I think that both of those players are going to be fabulous this year, but those are just a couple of veterans that we are going to want to take a look at here in game one and throughout this preseason, how they really mesh now with this new style of play for the Chicago Bulls. All right, so as we push forward, the next thing we want to look at is going to be uh, Dalen Terry and Julian Phillips, like, and THT, all right, because they are all essentially fighting for uh, a rotational uh, spot on this team. And I think that we have seen a lot of what Dalen Terry has been able to do in the offseason. He's worked out with DeMar DeRozan. He's been out there in the Drew Leagues. He's looked good. He's been working out with Kevin Durant out in LA. So we see a lot of these uh, videos and we're pretty hyped. We're excited to see, you know, can he be that player that can impact the game in multiple ways, whether it's defense, rebounding, shooting the 
basketball, uh, being a guard forward that's going to distribute the basketball, this is going to be the season for Daylon Terry and Julian Phillips. And I think that starting in game one, we want to see a lot of those players, okay? Because we want to see, are they going to be the players that uh, can go ahead and build with this team long-term? Or if not, then the Chicago Bulls are going to have to make moves and get somebody else over that fits in with the roster. You know, I am very excited for these players. I think they can do it. Julian Phillips looked very good in his time out in the summer league. I think that he has come back from the foot injury. And I, I want to see him now take off. Him and Dale and Terry and THT, who has been an NBA champion, uh, has a ton of experience. He's coming into a situation where this team doesn't have an identity. And he has an absolute chance to go ahead and establish that and maybe uh, now get himself back in a rotation and be a key piece to a team. All right, so as we move forward, uh, the next thing we take a look at here is Adama Sonogo and then also to uh, Kenny Lofton Jr. I think that with Sonogo and Kenny Lofton Jr., I want to see that physicality. We've seen the physicality in moments. We've seen it in the Summer League. We've seen it a ton in the G League with Sonogo, and we've also seen that uh, with Kenny Lofton Jr. Now we want to see can that be sustained in NBA action? It starts tonight against the Cavs. I want to see them because if we do move on from Booch, there's a chance that we may not bring a big man back. In fact, uh, you know, right now we're known as the Chicago Guards because that's what we do. We bring in guards, but you know, we just can't um, go ahead and then say, all right, we're not bringing back a big, and we haven't tested Sonogo, and then also to Kenny Lofton Jr., Jalen Smith. Like those uh, players are going to be dependent on, and so we need to see what they can do in NBA action. So Billy Donovan needs to play them a lot, not just tonight, but throughout the season. Uh, of a preseason basketball. We need to see that. Next up, Modest Buzelis. All right. And so Modest Buzelis is a player that I'm absolutely rooting for. Uh, all these young players I am, but Modest Buzelis has shown us a lot of athleticism in the summer league. A lot of us feel like, man, could he be the rookie of the year if you played him 30 minutes a game? I don't know. I, I kind of think that he would maybe figure it out because he just has that type of mindset that he wants it that bad. I think initially when he comes off tonight, I think that his first uh, thing that he's going to do is have to be impactful on the defensive end. I think those chase down blocks that you saw, him being able to erase mistakes, I think that that's going to be huge for him, especially for a team like us that is going to be challenged defensively. I think him being able to erase mistakes on the perimeter is going to be really the start of him getting some minutes throughout the season. And I have to believe that offensively he's going to figure it out because even with the physicality, right? He still in the summer league showed that he was able to get to the line. And I think that he has that ability to draw contact and perhaps get to the line. Is the ref going to call it all the time? No. But I think at some point he's going to be able to get to the line. And I think that his jump shot, it like I said before, it's not broke. It's a matter of just trusting the mechanics, continuing to put in the work, and it is going to go down. He's shown too many signs, I think, already that suggest that he is going to be a good offensive player. It is all about just getting reps and getting used to the NBA game. It starts tonight against the Cavaliers and really carries over throughout the rest of the preseason. We need to see a lot of Manus Buzelis, especially since our coach is talking about sending him down to the G League. We need to see him in some NBA action and see what he can do. All right. And so next, as we move on, that leads us to Billy Donovan. And I think that a lot is going to be on Billy Donovan starting with tonight because he's talked about wanting to play faster. Uh, he's talked about, you know, defensively, we are going to be challenged. And I would have to think that this might be one of the most challenging seasons for um, for Billy Donovan because he is going to have to trust younger players. He doesn't have DeMar DeRozan to really bell us out like he had last year. He's going to have to trust that Kobe White can do this, and I think he can. He's going to have to trust that Ayo Desumu is going to be able to lead uh, either from the start or coming off the bench, whatever role they decide to go with. I think that both of those players are going to be fine, but either way, he's going to have to trust those players. And then whatever friction uh, that was reported out there with Zach Levine and all this and all that, 
Uh, look, he is going to have to now trust Zach Levine to be able to fit in and do exactly what he is talking about. This is the offense that he wanted. Uh, I think that he has wanted this all along. He's talked about his time in OKC, being able to run that three-guard lineup. He feels like he can excel with it. Management thinks he can excel with it. They feel like they can figure it out defensively here. And you can, you know, but it is going to take some time. And you don't just go out there and run up and down the court and just uh, shoot up a whole bunch of shots. Like, that's not going to do it either. And I think for the people that are worried about that, you have to trust players like Kobe White and, and I think you're going to see that as time goes along, as the season goes along, you're going to see why I think that Kobe White is so valuable because, you know, he was able to take over some moments in the clutch. And I think that he is now trained for this. He's ready for this. And so those moments where he would go cold, I don't think he's going to go cold now because he's trained. He's ready to break through that wall that hit him last year. And so I think we're going to be fine there, but we still have to establish this fast paced tempo. And defensively, we're going to have to really be on a string um, as a unit to figure this out because it is not going to be just one individual defender that is going to stick out, even though you do want Dale and Terry, Julian Phillips, Modest Buzelis, uh, some of this physical from Sonogo and these players to hopefully uh, really trickle down into this team. But right now, we don't have that one player necessarily that could stick out. And so let me know in the comments what you are thinking about some of these points as we get ready to head uh, into this game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Let me know, do you think it is going to be a lot on Billy Donovan? Are you really excited for Dalen Terry, Julian Phillips? Are you excited about the physicality that Sonogo, Kenny Lofton Jr. could bring? this rookie and modest Buzelis, the stories around these veterans that we have on the floor, whether it's Zach Levine, uh, Patrick Williams, Lonzo Ball, let me know in the comments what you're thinking. Just want to thank everybody for liking, subscribing, and sharing it means a lot to me. Wanted to let you know that 64.2% of you that watch are not subscribed, so make sure that you continue to slam dunk on that subscribe button for me as we try to reach 5,000 subscribers before the NBA season starts. And we'll be talking a little post game after tonight's game. So be ready for that. I just want to thank everybody out there and let you know, even though we're talking preseason basketball, I'm still saying go Bulls. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.